Happy Sabbath. You know, Addie, there's just something special about today. I don't know. Maybe it's you and me doing this together. It's way more beautiful up here today than normal. Yeah. I think you bring a lot of beauty. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to welcome you to your church. Which church is this? Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yes, this is Shehala's Seventh-day Adventist Church. My name is Pastor John, and this is my dear friend Addie. Addie, do you know what your name means in Hebrew? Mm, daughter of Adam. Daughter of Adam. I learned that this week as I was studying. Mm. And I said, I wonder if she knows that her name is Daughter of Adam. Yes. So the first name of the first man was? Adam. And then Jesus came, and they call him the second Adam, because the first Adam is sin, and the second Adam is redemption of sin. Mm -hmm. And then you're the daughter of? Adam. And w now what's your dad's name? Adam. Wow. <laughs> You learn something new every Sabbath. <laughs> well, welcome. Whether you're here, close up in person, or way up in the balcony, or online, we want to welcome you as we come to worship God. Yes. So the day's sermon title is what? Can you see it up there on the screen? Walk with eternal swag. Walk with an eternal swag. Well, let's talk, let's talk with God first, huh? Let's pray. How about you start, and then I'll finish. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can be here today. We pray as this is a hard time for many people. Many people are getting sick. We pray you would take us to heaven soon. Yes. Soon, very soon. We want to come up there and live with you. Please pray for... Pastor John, as he shares the word, please pray for me, and yes. please pray for all of the church family. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, thank you for a day that we can worship you together. Thank you that Addie is here with me up front. And Lord, we're praying that you're with us. And Lord, we want to talk about you. How do we walk with you? How do we talk with you? And is there a special swagger in our life that you bring? So, Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit will be upon us. And thank you that Addie could spend some time up here with me, but most importantly, with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, Addie, I think, first of all, maybe you and I should discuss the title. So, walking is just walking around, right? Yeah, right. Or you, or you could run or... It doesn't matter. You can talk to God any way you want. Yeah, that's right. And then it says, with an eternal. So, eternal means like forever, right? Right. So then I put swag, and it's not fair to you because you probably don't know my definition of swag. So how about I tell you my definition, and then you share with me your definition. Okay. All right, so my definition of swag would be my own special walk with God. That sounds like a good definition. Yeah. Hopefully there's humility in that. Now, what do you think? What's your definition of swag? Hmm. A walk with eternal swag. Let's see. Well, I couldn't say it better than you. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a very special walk. I've always wanted to actually see God or actually have him speak to me. It's what I've wanted. Amen. I think that would be cool. You know, I think God was speaking to me this week. Now, maybe not verbally the way you may be referring to, but when I was thinking about this sermon this week, I was like, well, I really want Addie to say the prayer with me. And then I thought about it, and I said, well, I really want to take a walk with Addie and talk about Enoch. And then as I talked to you this week, then I was like, no, no, God is saying, no, Addie needs to be doing this sermon this week. And I said, all right, Lord, forgive me. I'm a slow learner, but yes. <laughs> So we didn't really even plan this. We just decided that Addie's supposed to speak this week and then she's here. Mm -hmm. So let's take a walk. Let's take a walk. Let's just walk around a little bit. So Addie, I know you from Lewis County Adventist School. Mm -hmm. um, I know you because I hang out with your mom and your dad, Adam and Julie. Yeah. Let's see, how else do I know you? I remember when we had communion that 
yeah. night in the beginning of the year. Remember Friday night communion? I'll let you go first yes. since you're the lady. Mm -hmm. And I asked for prayer requests and praises. You, do you remember some of the things that you said in your prayer requests and praises that Friday night communion? Yes. Oh, I, that touched my heart. Was, we had that open time of prayer. What do you remember about that night? Well, I remember God was with me when I was saying that. And I remember that it must have touched most people's hearts. Yeah. I remember what I said, too, most of the time. Well, you definitely are beautiful like your parents, but I think your heart and your beauty and your love for Christ is really what continues to touch my heart. Mm -hmm. So this week I've been studying about Enoch. Mm -hmm. And there's lots and lots of Bible verses on Enoch. No. No. So you studied on Enoch then too. Yeah. You mean you came to church and you studied the Bible? You just didn't yes. take what the pastor said? You studied it on your own? Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. So... There's not many verses about Enoch. What do you remember about Enoch? Well, I remember that it says he walked for God, and I think that was cool. He lived for many years, and he was taken up, and I think that was cool. Yeah, he was taken up by God. So there was something about Enoch. So there's only a few verses, and we'll go over it with our church family, but yeah. as you said, he walked with God. Why don't you go first here? Yeah. He walked with God. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool that he walked with God because I imagine walking like sometimes we can try to walk with God, but I think it's really special that God would actually talk back to him, and he knew all about God. I think that was really cool. That's really cool. Let's read the verse for the Sabbath. Let's read the scripture verse. So if we ask our church family to go with us, let's go to Colossians. All right, now maybe we should talk about Colossians. That's sort of a hard book to find. <laughs> so let's, let's say, so it's in the New Testament, right? Colossians. Yeah. So let's say Matthew, Mark, Mark Luke, Luke, John, John Acts, Romans, Romans. 1 Corinthians, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Corinthians, gets a little more difficult, Galatians, Galatians Ephesians, Ephesians, Philippians, Philippians Colossians. Colossians. All right. Okay. I just made mine easy. I just mm -hmm. marked it in my Bible. So let's go to Colossians. Okay, this is really hard to find for me. Oh, no worries. Let's go to Colossians. Here we okay. go. You said it right. Mm hmm I really like your Bible here. <laughs> Thanks. I like it too. <laughs> All right. Colossians chapter 2. Are you with us, church family? Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Do you have it too, Addie? Yep. Why don't you read it? So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord... Continue to live your lives in him. Right, now I'm going to read my version. Mine says, As you therefore have received Christ, much like yours, Jesus Christ, then it identifies who he is, the Lord, so walk in him. So I think about that. Walk in him. Addie, do you ever sometimes think that this world, it just feels like it's sort of like a big mess? Yeah, it feels like it's tangled up with lines, lines, and lines. It feels like it's just scrunched up. It's getting devoured by sin. Yeah, and sometimes I feel like, as I look around, people look a little bit lost. And they're not knowing the direction they're going. Yeah. Can I tell you a story as we begin? Sure. Can we sit on the front here? Can we sit here on the stairs? Sure. Here, why don't you sit there and I'll sit here. I remember, I want to thank Joni for the children's story. Thank you, Joni. And Freya, isn't she amazing? Yes. I'm telling you what, it like took my breath away. 
and then Art on the piano. And Art is so cool, he even comes with two sets of shoes. So if one of them wears out because he's walking around so much, he's got a second pair of shoes. <laughs> if you don't believe me, look under the pew. They're right there. <laughs> so I want to tell you a story. <laughs> Sometimes I think it feels like life, we get a little bit lost. Well, yeah. I, I got this is a true story. So recently I went to, have you ever gone snorkeling? I'm scared of snorkeling. You're scared of snorkeling? <laughs> Why? Um, because, well, mostly it's just um, because of the water. I'm really scared of going into deep into the ocean because I know there's a lot of different creatures in there. So I'm kind of a little scared about that. I went once, but I had like this board and it was not really snorkeling, but I did see a lot of fish and coral. It was really cool. So we were at this, at this marina out in Florida. Do you know where Florida's at? We were just talking about Florida. Yeah, so Washington is like way in the northwest, and then Florida is all way in the southeast. Mm -hmm. And there's a little part that goes down, they call it the Keys, and it's Key Largo. And it's just this little strip of land with the ocean on both sides. But what's really cool is the ocean is all light blue and just beautiful. You can see to the bottom. So we were going on a snorkeling trip. And that morning, as I was waiting for my wife and daughter to get ready, it takes them a little bit longer than me, mm -hmm. I turned on the news. And the news, I usually don't watch much news, mm -hmm. but as I turned it on, they had this boat out in the water, and there was this great white shark. Mm -hmm. And it was swimming around the boat. And it made news because the shark had been swimming around the boat for two hours. Oh, my. It's not the little shark. It's the big one. Oh. And it was such a cool shark, he turned upside down its belly and just floated next to the boat. <laughs> they could even reach out and they pet the shark. Oh, my. And I was like, I don't know about that. And the shark nibbled on the back of the boat but didn't bite it or anything. Oh, cool. So when I'm out ready to go out and go snorkeling, and I see this, and I'm like, Wow. So we go to the state park and we get on these little boats and they take us out and it's out in the ocean. You can see down the water's blue. It's in, it's in the keys there. And I tell my daughter Sophia, I said, you know, I saw this great white shark on the news. And they're telling us to put our little life vests on and how to wear everything right. We're taking this boat a couple miles out and giving us the instructions. I said, and it floated around and swam around the boat. And she's like, really, Dad? <laughs> Dad, should we go in the water? Sure, we should go in the water. There's no sharks. I mean, there are, but not many of them. And think of the fish you're going to see. And what's really neat about this park was it had a statue of Jesus. Wow. Now, at your school, there's a, little st there's a statue of Jesus with the children, right? Yeah. So it reminds us that Jesus loves children. Well, this statue has its arms up in the air, and as the sun hits the water, it lights up the statue in the water. And since the water's so clear, you can see Jesus. Wow. So I'm like, I want to see Jesus. So we get there, and we start jumping off into the water. Now, the water is pretty cold. And my wife's not much of a swimmer, so she's got the vest on, she's got the little floaty tube. I mean, if she floated anymore, I mean, she's like on top of the water. And we're floating around and we're looking for fish, and I saw some fish, and everybody's, there's lots of people around, and we're swimming, and I see all kinds of fish. And that's what I like about snorkeling. And I'm looking around because I'm looking for Jesus, and I'm not finding Jesus. And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and then I finally just put my head above the water and shout out to the people. Where is Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? I did that, really. And the next thing I know, the people are starting to go back into the boat. I'm like, we're supposed to be a two-hour tour, and they're all getting back in the boat. I said, where is Jesus? And they're all getting back in the boat. And they're quite a couple hundred yards away, so I don't know if they hear me yelling at them, and I can't sit here with they're yelling back at me, and... But I don't want to wave my hands because then they'll think I need help. So I just shouted, where's Jesus? So I kept looking and looking and looking. And then I realized I'm the last person out there. Everybody's back on my boat. Why am I the last person in the water? But I didn't want to go until I found Jesus. 
But let's wait until I tell you the end. Let's talk some more about Enoch. So let's dig in here. Let's dig into God's word. Let's see if we can find Jesus in God's word. All right. Yeah. All right, so let's open up our Bibles. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Genesis. Let's go to the first bur- b- book. The birth of the Bible. Let's go to Genesis. All right, Genesis, and we're going to talk about Enoch, so let's go to chapter 5. You know, maybe we should start in chapter 4. All right, so we know that God created the earth. Yeah. And we know that through sin, since Adam and Eve made bad decisions, right? Yeah. That they were cast out of the Garden of Eden, right? Right. Do you think we should fill them in? I think they probably know that. Yeah, probably. All right. And then there was Abel and there was Cain, Mm -hmm. the sons of? Uh, Adam and Eve. Right. And you're the son of Adam too. And God asked Abel and Cain to give him a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So remember, Abel brought a lamb, which Mm -hmm. represents Jesus. Yeah. And Cain brought fruits of his work. Mm -hmm. And sadly, Cain killed Abel. And that's where really sin, you saw the destruction of sin. All right, but we need to talk about the Enoch here. So let's look at the family of Cain, because Cain left. So let's look at chapter 4, verse 16, because I don't want us to get confused. Do you want to read chapter 4, verse 16? 16, sure. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. He left God's presence. He was lost. Remember sometimes I was saying this world just feels like people are lost. All right, read verse 17. Cain made love to his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain was then building a city and he named it after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Arad and I'm glad you're reading this one. There's a lot of big names. I don't think I can do this one. <laughs> was the father of Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, just say it real fast so they won't and know. And Massachusetts was the father of Methuselah. <laughs> mm. And Methuselah was the father of Lamech. And Lamech married two women, one named Ada and the other named Zillah. All right, let's stop there. So we have an Enoch here, right? Right. And it said Cain walked from the presence of God. So basically, he got lost, right? Right. And they named the city after his son Enoch. So you have, you've heard the word genealogy? Sort of a big word. It's like, it's sort of like a family tree. Um, so, maybe one. So a family tree. So your mom and dad are Adam and Julie. Mm-hmm. And then under that tree is Josiah and Addie. Mm-hmm. Right? And someday, if and when you get married, then you have kids and that tree just gets bigger. And above your mom, your dad, is their parents. Mm-hmm. Right? So Bob and Karen are Adam's parents. And yeah. So that's a family tree. So Cain was part of Adam's family tree, but now I'm going to go to chapter, look over, let's go to same chapter 4, but let's, let's look at verse 25. Now we're going to talk about the next son that came, and this is the next family tree that's under Adam. So I'm going to read 25, okay? Okay. It says, Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son, and they named him Seth. For God had appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, who Cain killed. And Seth to him also was born and named him Enosh, and the men began to call him by the name of the Lord. So you have two areas. You have Cain that went away, away from God, got lost, and then Seth now came into the world. Now look at, let, we're going to get to Enoch here. This is another Enoch. So we're going to talk about not the Enoch of Cain, but the Enoch of Seth. And we had to clarify or they would get lost on that one because mm-hmm. there's another Enoch. So if I just say Enoch, there's another one. Mm-hmm. So um, verse, read verse 1 of chapter 5. This is written account of Adam's family line. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. Man, you and I are created in the likeness of God. Wouldn't that be amazing? That is amazing. 
Now, as I look in my Bible, and I'm going to say it fairly quick here. So you have Adam, and Adam lived 930 years. 930 years. Wow. Now, my question is this. What do you think? So when Adam is 800, what does he look like at 800? What does he look at like at 200? Really old. You think? Or at 200, did he look like he was in his 20s? Because yeah. he lived in 900, so did he look old at 200? Hmm. I don't know. We don't know that. <laughs> so Adam lived 930 years. Seth lived 912 years. Now I'm going down the family tree, okay? Seth lived 912 years. Enosh lived 905 years. Canaan lived 910 years. Mahala lived 895 years. Jared, the father of Enoch, the one we're getting to, he lived 962 years. Now, let's read verse 21. So church family, don't lose us here. Chapter 5, verse 21. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Massachusetts. After he became the father of Massachusetts, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. How many years did he walk faithfully with God? 300. I think Enoch has probably beat us on that one. 300 years. And you're, you're nine? So you've walked nine years with God. I'm not going to say my age. Or should I say my age? Should I say my age? I don't know. I don't I'm 48. Think. Hopefully I've walked 48 years with God. All right, now let's keep looking. So he had this son, Methuselah, that you mentioned, who lived 969 years. And we as Christians say Methuselah was the longest living person because he lived 969 years. Have you heard that before? No. Methuselah, 969 years. And Enoch was his father. But I would venture to say Enoch lived longer because he never died. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a separate Enoch from Cain's Enoch. This is Seth's Enoch. All right, let's look at verse... 23. 23 and 24. Yeah, you read those. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because dog, God took him away. Hmm. He walked faithfully with God and God took him away. I think many times we read over it and we just go, keep going. That's pretty important. He walked faithfully with God and God took him away. So what do you think about that? What's, what's your mind telling you right now? What do you think? What did he do different? He walked with God. He walked with God his whole life and became good friends with him. Yeah. So when you and I walk together at the school, or we walk together at church, there's something about taking steps with people that literally grow the relationship. Remember it said Cain had walked away and then Seth, that generation, walked with God. Interesting. I'm, you know I like numbers. When I count the different generations, Enoch is number seven from the genealogy of Adam. And seven is the perfect number. To me, that's interesting. Yeah. So what, I wonder what they talked about. What do you think they talked about? Um, probably life together, probably things that he wanted to share, that he was having trouble with. That's what I would talk about. Yeah. You know, a lot can be said about how a person walks. We take a step and we move further in a direction. We're told even that we'll live longer if we walk 30 minutes a day. <laughs> and if we intentionally walk, Enoch has proven with a spiritual walk, an eternal walk, will have a special swag about us. That personal walk with God. Yeah. I want that. Me too. That's why I felt convicted to ask you today to help with the sermon. And it's interesting. So I was talking to you yesterday, and you said something to me. And I, I really like the way you said it. But you said, I've, I've been wanting to preach a sermon. And I was like, that was cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> I've always, I've always been thinking, like one time I was thinking when I was in my grandma's house, I was thinking how cool it would it be to preach a sermon and how cool you could talk about anything you really wanted to about God. Amen. Amen. Well, maybe we should talk about Enoch's name. In Hebrew, it means, and I looked this up. I didn't have this up here, okay? I looked it up. Mm -hmm. It means experience or dedicated. 
So if we think he walked with God, sounds like he got some good experience, first-hand knowledge. Yeah. And then I like the thought that he was dedicated to God. That's cool. I almost, I picture him almost like holding hands. Yeah. And I see like the devil trying to separate their hands, and they just held it tighter, and they just kept walking. <laughs> Sometimes when my daughter was holding hands with her boyfriend, you know, I was like trying to pull him apart. <laughs> but there's something about that. And his name means so much. Experience and dedicated. And I love your name. Child of Adam. You know what John means? You know what my name means? No, I do not God is gracious. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. That is pretty cool, isn't it? All right, well, else? what should we all talk about? All right, let's go now. Let's look at some other verses of Enoch because there's not a whole lot. So let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews in the back of the Bible. All right, Hebrews chapter 4. Chapter 4. No, no, no. No, no, not chapter 4. Let's go to the faith chapter. Pastor Glenn would say the faith chapter. That's 11. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. All right, so again, it's in the New Testament in the back of the Bible. If you see James, you've gone too far. If you see Philemon or Philemon, as some people say, you're right there. Turn the page, and then you have Hebrews chapter 11. So we're going to go to the faith chapter because this faith chapter talks about Enoch. And since we don't know a lot about Enoch, because you told me, I, I said, man, there must be a, I mean, if he went to heaven, there must be all kinds of Bible verses about him. No. But there's not. Yeah, it's so short. When I looked it up, um, when I was um, looking it up, I was like, it's so short. I imagined it to be way longer. I'm like, if I was there right then, I would write, I would write much more. Right, right. I, we'll have to talk to Moses about that sometime. Why didn't he write more? All right, so we're in the faith chapter, Hebrews 11. 11, and let's look at 11 verse, how about 4? Let's start with verse 4. By faith Abel brought God a better of fearing than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteousness. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. Well, we've got to unpack that. Abel still speaks till he's dead, and he's dead? How's that possible? And I see, too, okay, so they had a sacrifice that we talked about earlier. They both brought a sacrifice, right? Right. Abel brought the lamb, which represents God, God right? Jesus coming, and Cain brought his own fruits. Mm. Doesn't sound bad, but it's his own fruits. Hmm. All right. My Bible says, too, on that verse, God testified of these gifts. So I was thinking about that verse and praying, all right, and saying, Lord, what does it mean that being dead still speaks? And you know what I think God is saying? It says it in the verse. God testifies of his gifts. God's word testifies of his gifts. Even today, Cain has been dead for so many years. His testimony is still alive today, his perfect sacrifice he made for God. What I mean by perfect, Jesus is the perfect sacrifice, but he gave Jesus the sacrifice that Christ asked for. Yeah. Okay, let's read verse 5 now. Now we're going to talk about Enoch. By faith, Enoch was taken from his life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commanded as one who pleased God. Right there. Mine says, too, that it was taken, he had a testimony. So a testimony is your story. Your, let me ask you, let's hear a little bit about your testimony. So, how did you fall in love with God? Where did it happen for you? Well, my parents taught me I couldn't have lived without them. Huh. I couldn't have lived with God without them. I just feel like when somebody asks me a question about God, I have a feeling I just have to say something. I just have to give it. I have to give something. You know, I said how beautiful you are, and you are very beautiful on the outside. But your heart on the inside, you're even more beautiful because when you talk about God, it's just, it's awesome. 
Hmm. Your excitement about them. That we can't deny. That's your testimony, how you fell in love with God. Now the blessing and the challenge is this. Do we continue to walk with God as you and I did? Or at some point, do we become like Cain and walk away from God as he did? And there's even the two Enochs. One Enoch from Cain's side and one Enoch from Seth's side. One walked with God, one didn't walk with God. One was lost, the other one was found and held hands with Jesus. I love that thought. The beauty of your testimony, Addie, is so now you can add this. You know, you're in, you're in third grade, right? You're nine years old. Now you've preached a sermon. Um, that's your testimony. It grows and it grows. At least it should grow because if we stop growing, then it's... We're gone. We're lost. Yeah, we get lost. All right, let's keep reading. So, it pleased God... And his testimony, read verse 6. And I think if our church family, if we can keep them awake a few more minutes, this, this, even the people Zooming, not Zooming, but they're watching on live stream, I think they're at home in their PJs because they don't want to dress up. I think they're at home and just watching. And that's all right. That's all right. But this is the verse. This is the verse. Well, the walking with God was the verse too. But this is a verse. We want, to, we want to read it. All right. So you read it. So we're going to read chapter 11 of Hebrews, all right? Verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly Lee, seek him. Beautifully read. So what I heard you say, we must believe he is who he says he is. And I see that word you said earnestly seeking. That's like really want to be God's best friend. Mine says diligently seeking, which is synonymous, meaning it's, it's similar. Yeah. And mine ends with what you said, seeking him. So think of some of your best friends. You have that in your mind? Yeah. All right, let's tell our church family. Why don't you tell them? Think of some of your best friends. Miley and Lucy. <laughs> Jacob and Judson. Caleb and Cyrus. And Ella and Lindley, which I don't think are here today. Maybe they're watching online in their PJs. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I see Enoch the same way. I think God took him. It says, the Bible says, because it pleased God and his testimony. But I think their relationship was so close, there was no need for any separation. Now, maybe Enoch was the only one in the Bible that was taken like that. What do you think? Was there anybody else? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. We didn't talk about this. Are you sure someone else was taken and didn't see death? Yes. Well, well you know, Jesus died before he rose, and then right. he was taken, but he saw death. Right. What do so you think? I, I actually, Moses was taken up. Moses, he saw death, though. Right. Who else? Do you remember there's an Elijah and Elisha, and I get them right. confused at times, <laughs> some of their stories? Yeah. Elijah mentored Elisha. Yeah, Elijah went to heaven without seeing death. Without seeing death. Now, Elisha could have been saying, that's not fair. Why am I going to die and you get to go to heaven? But do you remember what Elisha did? He didn't do that. Mm -mm. He walked with Elijah. And wherever Elijah went, Elisha went. And people are saying, don't you know your mentor is going to be taken to heaven? And Elisha said, I'm going to walk every minute with him. And even when Elijah was translated up, you're right. Elisha watched it happen. Mm -hmm. But maybe we should be talking about not that Elisha wasn't translated. Elisha received a double portion of blessing. Right. Maybe we should be focusing on the double portion of blessing. So I think Enoch had... Much similar things. He wanted that same walk with God as God mentored him. I don't know. I mean, we're just trying to talk about what their conversations might have been. Yeah. Maybe we should dwell more about what these conversations would mm. be like. Yeah. 
I wonder if our church family, how much conversation they've had with God this week. I don't know. Should we challenge them to talk more with God? But why should we ask them to talk more with God? What does God bring? What does God, when you talk more with God, what does God do in your life? Well, he makes us more special, and he makes us so we can um, give word to other people, help save people. Ah. So back to your testimony. You're sharing your love for Jesus, and then they want to know about Jesus. And if we have something so good, why are we keeping it to ourselves? Why aren't we telling everybody how wonderful yeah. Jesus is, right? Right. Hmm. Well, Methuselah did live 969 years, and we talk about how long he lived. But Enoch is alive today. Yeah, so he lived much more. And who knows? Maybe he can even hear today what we're talking about. I don't know, <laughs> but he's alive. Yeah. And he's waiting for us to come. Uh-huh. And he's encouraging us to walk with God. And yeah. he's giving us the perfect example. Man, that's awesome. I'd still like to live 969 years, but you know what? I'd really rather live with God because, you know, whether you live 80 years, which is a pretty good long time, or 90 years, it's never long enough. The goodbyes are just as hard. Whether they live 10 years, the goodbyes are just as hard. But in heaven, we won't say goodbye. We'll say, see you later. <laughs> what do you think about that? That would be awesome. Yeah, that will be awesome. All right, well, on my bulletin... And the church has the bulletin. There's a few verses that I think I, we should read here. There's Amos 3.3. 3. And you can look on your bulletin. It's under God's Word section. Amos 3.3. 3. And see, I got that right there. Why don't you give them just a second to pull their bulletin and then read that. Okay. Right there. But give them just a second to find it. Amos 3.3. 3. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Amos 3.3. 3. Wow. What do you think that means? We should walk with God. Yeah. And be together. And when we're together, so when you hold, you know, when you and your grandmother sang, you've done it a few weeks, and I absolutely love it. I can't tell you how many people tell me how much they love all the wonderful special music we have. And we have... You know, just like the amazing special music today by Frey and Art, we have wonderful special music. But I noticed something about you when you and your grandmother were singing. All right, I believe you rock forward. Yeah. And she rocks backwards as she sings. <laughs> so as I was watching you, and it was so awesome, you did it like a couple weeks back to back. You rocked forward, and she rocked backwards. <laughs> and even though... You have so much like your grandmother, and you have your beauty and all the things, but you still have your own identity too. You both are rockers. It's okay to rock <laughs> if you just rock the right way. <laughs> You're both rockers, but you rocked in different directions. Man, you know, if I was really thinking and I missed it, I would have asked you and your grandmother to sing a special music today as we close. Oh, I wish I would have thought of that ahead of time. All right, I got a, I got a few things I want to... I want to run by here. I want, to, want your ideas. So I looked up quotes on Enoch. And these are some quotes by some, I don't know, some people, some may be famous. I see Enoch is famous. Yeah. So here's some cool quotes. Tell me what you think. It says, those who walk with God always reach their destination. By Henry Ford said that. I agree. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Those that walk with God will reach that destination. All right, here's another one. If I walk with the world, that's separated from God, I can't walk with God. Sort of like I choose, like the two Cains, or yeah. like the, actually the two Enochs. One Enoch was on Cain's side, had a town and city named after him, but he was of the world. The other Enoch walked with God. Yeah. So this author, this was Dwight L. Moody, an amazing speaker, it says, he said, if I walk with the world, I can't walk with God. I agree. That basically means you love the world more than you love God. Yeah. I agree too. How about this one? God's mighty power comes when, when God's people learn to walk with God. I also agree with that. Yeah, that's Jack Hiles. How about this one? Walking with God doesn't lead to God's favor. God's favor leads to walking with God. 
That's sort of deep. I have to think about that. Walking with God doesn't lead to God's favor. God's favor leads to walking with God. It's interesting. I think that's a little above my, my thinking. Yeah. I'm a little confused on that. Yeah, Tulian said that. I don't know who he is. Here's another one. Don't worry. God has gone before you and prepared the way. Just keep walking. Ooh. That's an unknown author. Here's another one. We want more men and women who walk with God and before God like Enoch. Yes. So my prayer today, as we're coming close to an ending here, is that our church family, it's just not about making them feel good for 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. It's about making them feel good for an eternity as they walk with God. You know, Pastor Enrique said something to me recently, and I really liked it. I told him, I said, I was really blessed by your sermon. You know what he said to me? He said, I hope it just doesn't make you feel good. I hope it changes our life little by little. I really like that. Hmm. All right, here's another quote. Smart men walked on the moon. We've seen that, right? Daring men walk on the ocean floor. Well, I, I didn't walk on the floor. Mm. I snorkeled. But wise men walk with God. That one's good. Leonard Ravenhill said that. Here's one. I thought I should put one in. I made my own up. What do you think about this? This is mine. God is merciful and will be found if we learn to walk and talk with him. That's special because you did it. Yeah, that's what God put on my heart. Here's one. And it says the author's God, and maybe it is. I'm here. Let's walk together. That's, God's here. Yeah. He's always here. Amen. He's just ready for us to come. Amen. Hmm. What else? Any other thoughts on your mind? Well, I think that was really special for him. I would always like to do that with God. Hmm. That seems really cool so when you have that opportunity to see God face to face and walk with him and I believe someday you will as long as you choose God every day yeah what do you think you'll say to him I'd probably ask him to help me and guide me through my life mm -hmm. and so that I can go to heaven with mm -hmm. hopefully all of the church family Amen. Yeah, I often wonder, am I going to be able to speak? What will I say? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's astonishing. All right, let's finish our story. Let's sit back down here. I'm going to tell you the rest of the story, snorkeling. Do you want to hear it, or should we just... Yeah? Okay. You know what I miss about the children's story, which is probably one of my favorite stories? Yeah. Because remember on Sabbath before COVID... You remember we had kids that went all the way across? Mm -hmm. I remember one time counting 50 kids. Wow. That's a lot of kids. Yeah. All right, so I'm snorkeling in the water, and I'm looking for what? You remember? Jesus. Jesus. Now, it's a statue of Jesus representing Jesus. And I'd seen pictures, and they told us on the boat he was there. But everybody's getting back in the boat, and I'm like, is my time ra ran out? It doesn't feel like I've been out here two and a half hours swimming in the water. The water is cold. I did see some scary things. I saw a barracuda. I saw lots of cool fish, but I couldn't find Jesus. And everybody that I asked had left, got back on the boat. I found out later there was a shark in the water. But I don't think it was a great white shark. Sophia said she saw it, and it was, the story changes. But in her defense, she got the big mask on, and everything looks bigger when it's a shark, I'm sure. So I think it's something like, like this. She's not sure. So Sophia was in the water, and she got out of the water because she saw the shark. Well, that's probably not a bad idea. I didn't see the shark, and I didn't know there was a shark, so I kept swimming because I wanted to find Jesus. And I pray today that as we swim through the channels of life that have many beautiful distractions and a few sharks out there trying to eat us up maybe or just maybe take a look at us, that we keep looking for Jesus. 
Yeah. I found Jesus. And I have a picture. I hope we have a picture. Pastor Glenn, do we have a picture? Check it out. Look at this. So this is about 25 feet down. The statue is eight and a half feet tall. And the bottom base is over 4,000 pounds. So it's not going to move. Someone can't steal Jesus unless they have some really heavy duty equipment. Yeah. But as I saw Jesus, more boats started showing up. And more divers and snorkelers started coming in the water. And they were circling Jesus. And everybody wanted to be seen with a picture with Jesus. They had all these cameras underneath. And they wanted to be with Jesus. And a lot of them wanted to touch the statue. It's not Jesus, but it represents Jesus. And then I was thinking, how many of us want to be seen with Jesus? Yeah. How it's, many of us? Go ahead, I'm sorry. It's kind of like when, when you, you want to find Jesus and you're lost, and when you find him, you're just so thankful. Yes, amen. And I was. I was, just like you said, I was thankful that I found Jesus. And then as I saw these snorkeler and divers wanting to be around Jesus and be seen with Jesus in pictures that last for a long time, then I thought as Christians who profess to follow Jesus, do we want to be seen with Jesus? Yeah. Do we take pictures with Jesus and tell others about Jesus? Yes. Hmm. So the ending of the story was nobody got eaten by a shark mm -hmm. and we found Jesus and it was a great snorkeling trip. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, with um, Christians who follow Jesus, you don't need pictures with Jesus. You get to live your whole life with Jesus in heaven. Don't need pictures. We live our whole life with Jesus. In heaven. Can I give you a fist bump for that? That was powerful. <laughs> I think we should end with prayer. What do you think? Yeah. All right, well, let's go back up here because I, you know me. I like to kneel. I, yeah. let, Let's have a prayer time. How about I start and you finish? Okay. You bring it home. All right. All right. And then maybe Jesus will bring us home very soon. Let's pray. <laughs> uh, dear Lord, thank you for this time today together with our church family. Lord, we want time with you as Enoch did and does today. We want to walk and talk with Jesus. We don't know exactly how it went with you and Enoch, but just thinking about it is amazing. Thank you that Addie today wanted to spend some time. She wanted to spend time to praise your name, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So Lord, I just pray that we won't become lost in this world. There's many things that are going to scare us. That might even take our life. But Lord, if we're with Jesus, we have forever with you. So Lord, we're praying that you come very soon. Bless Addie and her family and Josiah and her mom and dad, Adam and Julie, that are raising her to love Jesus. But may Addie always choose, always choose you as her Lord and Savior and dearest friend. In Jesus' name, amen. That it's not raining, that you are with us always. You're just right beside us, waiting for us to come and choose you. Please help us not to get lost. Please help us not to let the devil stand in our way. Amen. Amen. Please help us to hold hands with you, walk with you yes. every single day. Please help us to remember we don't need photos. We don't need memories of you on earth. We need you to come be with us yes. and us to come be with you in heaven. Please pray for all of this church family. Please help everybody to be in heaven that day, that wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.